Hello, hello everybody. It's Mary with Stamps and Lingers and it is Thursday at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time or, you know, 1300 in the parlance of my people. So it is time for a Facebook video and let me just be sure I'm going to do a little quick refresh over here to be sure that I am transmittalating. Ah, I see transmittalation taking place. Get big so that I can see comments as they come in. All right, so just a uh, fair warning, I have a cold because I'm going on vacation in the same way that I, um, I'm also headed into a hurricane. Why wouldn't I? That just makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So anyway, I'm sucking on a cough drop so that I can hopefully get through this video. Hey, Karen, hopefully get through this video without having a coughing fit. And uh, so I will attempt to neither cough nor suck very hard on my cough drop. Hey, Carol, appreciate you guys coming. I just wanted to do a quick reminder. I am fixing to be out of town. And so um, here's the schedule. You can take a screenshot or it's on my Stamps and Lingers business page. So you can see it anytime you need to. All right. So there, I'm putting it away. Now, <clears throat> here's my card for today. This uses what is currently one of my very favorite sets ever. Soft seedlings, and um, I just think that's the prettiest leaf ever. Hey, Daryl, appreciate you guys coming. Hi, Amy. Um, hope you're ready for your big flight tomorrow. That ought to be fun. So here's my card. It is way smack, right dab in the middle, like with a protractor, a level, and a laser, right in the middle of my wheelhouse. This is couldn't be any more of me if I tried. <laughs> So we have the soft seedlings um, leaves, and I've only got three of them to fussy cut, so we're only going to be here for about an hour and a half. Pretty little sentiment. And then I've done some um, embossing with the Time Worn Embossing Folder. Hey, Debbie. Hi, Claire. And a little more embossing with the Timber 3D. So this card is all about texture. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I was, of course, kidding about needing to fussy cut three leaves. I already have two done. But I do kind of want to show you the technique, the technica. And let me see if I've got, if I had an extra piece. I did not. That was, you know, it has become my understanding. I finally figured myself out enough to know that the further ahead I am, the behinder I get. <clears throat> so I really actually do better and stay more organized. Hey, Karen. Hey, Deborah. Thank you. I don't know why I have to be sick. I think it's just, you know, it's my yearly thing, I guess. So what the heck? Doing that, Zy uh, not Zycam. Yeah, that Zycam thing. It's disgusting, but hopefully it'll work. Anyway, the behinder I am, the behinder I am. And the more I'm on time, I just completely lost that whole, that whole train. So just never mind. All right. What we're going to do here is we are going to stamp... <clears throat> this leaf, and I've done it twice already, and I'm going to do the third one just to show you the, the technique I used. So I'm just inking the image with my crushed curry ink pad, and then, hey Lenny, just so you guys remember, I will not be on my Zoom, so anybody who usually Zooms with me on Thursday evening, I will not be there tonight. I think I should get ready at some point. It's time for the suitcases to actually come out, I suppose. Now, I'm just dabbing my um, blending brush into my Cajun Craze ink pad, and I'm just going to kind of put it around the center, maybe around the edges a little bit. It, you know what? Have you ever seen a perfectly colored fall flower or leaf? No, of course not. The other thing that's fun about this is if you make three leaves using this technique, they're all going to be different, which is 1,000% accurate. 1,000%. All right, we're going to see what we get here. Oh, I know, Amy. I'm hoping I won't. Okay, and I like that. You can see it's got some of the red and some of the gold color, so I think it's relatively perfect, and I'm going to keep it. Hopefully, by the time we all get in the same spot, I will no longer have a cold. That's what the Zycam is supposed to do. It said so on the box. Okay, now I'm going to cut this out. This is fussy cutting, or as we say on our team, fussy cussing, because sometimes fussy cutting causes cussing. 
I have discovered, especially with a little more detailed image like this, that it's easier if you can kind of cut it out so you're not playing with all of that cardstock. This, I thought, was a very good opportunity to revisit the best way to, I better pull it back here where you can actually see it, the best way to fussy cut. Now, what you want to do is you want to put your cardstock right up against the fulcrum of those scissors. And if you can use the paper snips from Stampin' Up!, you're going to be ahead of the game already because they're really pretty awesome. And then keep the paper against the fulcrum and turn the cardstock, not the scissors. See how I'm moving the cardstock with my left hand? And you can make this swing right around that tip, just like that, and then swing it back. Easy peasy. All right. And the more, if you just take your time, it's not very difficult. I'm doing kind of a, I'm doing what I would call a die cut, fussy cut. So I'll show you what, you can see that I'm leaving a little edge of the crumb cake around the image. You could also do one where you cut right up against the line. All right, and it just depends on what you're looking for with your with your card project. One of the things that I like about this one is that I stamped this on crumb cake and I'm going to put it against crumb cake. So that means <clears throat> that the border that I'm leaving on there is really going to kind of disappear. Okay. So, so there's that. So I mentioned it's time to get the suitcases out. I'm kind of avoiding it because as soon as that happens, the man is going to get, he's going to go from excited to bummed because tomorrow he goes over to my friends to stay. And as much fun as he'll have there, he prefers to be with his mom. Let's just, let's just be real about that. And I would have taken him, but because the residents in, um, uh, wherever it is we're going. Jacksonville does allow pets, but Disney does not. So we'd had to take him and put him in a kennel there, and I think that would be way worse. So I'm just going to let him deal with the disappointment, and I'm not going to look back when we leave tomorrow so that I don't have to be sad. Because right now, I'm in the guilt mode of the agenda. <laughs> I go through the, I want to go, then I have to have the, I don't want to go, then I have to have the, I do want to go, but I feel guilty for wanting to go. So, that's where I'm at now. Sometime around mid-afternoon today, when I start whittling down the list of things to do and things start getting in the suitcase, my brain will switch to go mode. I mean, if it does like it's, it did for 30 years when I was traveling for business. Um, see, Disney is not evil. And Carol, it absolutely could be allergies because I get this tickle in my nose and then I sneeze uncontrollably, which is not really my cold symptoms. And I did start with a sore throat, which is also very indicative for me of allergies. So it could be. The leaves are just falling like crazy. <laughs> I mean, like crazy. And the acorns too. So between the acorns and the leaves, there's no telling what I'm smelling. No telling what I'm smelling. Okay. So here's this one. It's quite pale, but you can also see the other two that I already did. Same exact technique and they look completely different, which is exactly like fall car leaves look, right? Okay, now, a little trick I'm fixing to show you. I'm going to take my Time Worn 3D embossing folder. I'm going to put my leaves in there, like that. And I'm going to emboss it. All right, so hang tight. I'll be right back. I mean, you know, technically I'm not going anywhere, but I will be back in the frame here in about one second. Okay, two, in about two seconds. Here we go. All right, so now this does a couple of things. First off, it gives a little texture. And no, I know there are no leaves with time-worn embossing. I know, I know. But these leaves have it. Here's the other thing it does. 
it breaks down the fibers of the paper. And so then you can really kind of play with the leaves and roll them and make them look even more like leaves. Okay. All right, so this is step one of our card. Step two. I already have a piece of um, crumb cake cardstock, and it has been embossed. Can you tell? It's been embossed in the Time Worn embossing folder. And what I'm going to do is I am going to tear it down to approximately four and a half by three and a half. And I say approximately, and I seriously mean that. It's just not that critical. So I'm starting with five and a half by four. So I'm going to take about a half an inch off of the long ends and then a little more off of the edge edge. Now, here's a tip about tearing when you tear. I love doing it because it's really fun. But when you do it, whichever way you first start, you can see I'm tearing toward me like that. You want to continue that way because it changes. If you go the other direction, it puts the cut edge on the other side. So you don't want to do that, okay? You want to continue to come towards you all the way around. And it can be a little bit hard sometimes, but just keep working. Take a break. Go have a cup of coffee. Do whatever. And just tear all the way around. It will be so worth it in the end. So I'm just taking off like some. like It's like maybe a quarter of an inch off of each side. And then I'll measure. And if I need to take a little more off, we'll be good. Yeah, um, 15 will not work, Rosie. Will not work. Mm -mm, no. It's all the way down to 66 now with a little breeze and we're cold. I have my sweater on. Can you tell? All right, let's see where I'm at size-wise. Five, three, and a, about three and a half. Okay, so this way is about right. I'm going to take another little slice off of this end. Just like this. Okay. And I'm going to say that's close enough. Let's see how big that... Yeah, that's going to be good. Okay, so next step... I'm going to take some crumb cake ink and another blending brush. And I'm going to just kind of blend the edges. All right. And by edges, I do mean the edges, but a little bit on the inside. Because when you run that almost dry brush over it with just a little bit of ink in it, it kind of pulls out that embossing. Is And I'm, I'm shaking the table. I'm so sorry. If you get sick to your stomach, go take a Dramamine, but come right back because you're going to want to see how this looks. I promise. It's going to be good. You're going to like it a lot. All right. Here we go. Just going all the way around, adding a little color to the edges. I like to call this vintageizing. We're going to vintageize this panel. Okay, that's plenty. Any more than that. Do y'all remember doing the tea thing when you were in school, like in elementary school and you had to do a history project with an old an old document and you would write it out or type it out and then you would soak it in like tea water or coffee remember that and then you dried it and it looked like it was an old parchment document well that's kind of what we're doing here okay next thing now that you've got it all vintageized now we're going to kind of crumple it up just like that okay and you're not really crumpling it. I mean, obviously, because that would be silly. But you're breaking down those fibers more. And that way you'll have some curly edges. And if you feel like you want to, you can do a little tearing and a little bit of laying down of corners if you want. I really didn't do that on the first one. But you could if you liked it. And if you've got one and you want to, you could even... Take a craft stapler and staple that down a little bit, like that. 
just like that. So you add a little more vintage. This craft stapler is Tim Holtz, and I really like it. I don't use it a lot because I can't, I don't have the way to give it to you guys, right? But it's fun. So that's my vintageized panel. And now it's just time to assemblize the card. So I have, well, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know how people remember what they did when they were kids. I have a few memories in my head of stuff I did. I know I did it, but I don't remember it very well. All right. Now I have a an early espresso panel that is embossed in the timber embossing folder, and I'm going to use liquid glue, and we're going to put it on at kind of an angle onto the front of a crumb cake cardstock base, like so. And then we're going to use more liquid glue to put this on. And we're going to go at the opposite angle like that. And you could see that was very, very precisely measured, very, very precisely placed so that there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. All right. So now, now we're going to get our leaves that are perfectly fallified and we're going to adhere them with, you know, you guessed it, liquid glue. Mm -hmm. Sometimes seal is the thing and sometimes liquid glue is the thing, I'm just saying. And for me, for this, it's liquid glue. We'll just put these here. They're just kind of, you know, randomly fallen. Thank you, Rosie, for the reminder. Appreciate that. We'll put this right here like that. All right. Now, I have some crumb cake baker's twine from the baker's twine essentials pack, and I'm going to do a double simple a double length here, and I'm just going to tie a simple bow. By simple bow, I just mean an overhand bow, you know, two loops, regular old bow, bunnies, those kinds of things. The bunnies, all the bunnies. But you want it to be a little more even than that, Mary, my goodness. Some days, my fingers and my brain do not talk to each other very well. I don't, I'm not sure why, to be quite honest. Now, where are you going here? What have we got? What are we doing? What are we doing here? We got something askew. Something is awry. Something is awry. I have glue on my finger. That could be part of the problem. Or it could just be that my fingers and my brain have are having like a sick out or something yeah that's it they are not talking to each other my fingers are going make a bow my brain is going not on not in this lifetime girl uh -uh. not in this lifetime you're on camera therefore you are not going to be able to make a go hey faith appreciate you coming and i am going to use a glue dot oh that did not get it here stick down now Stick. Stick, I say. Stick. We're going to use a glue dot. For those of you who are not liquid glue fans, you could, in fact, use a couple of glue dots to hold down those leaves. It's certainly up to you. There are many adhesives in life. Use the one that makes you happy. We'll adhere that right there like so. And then my final piece I stamped Thinking of You from Soft Seedling in Early Espresso on a piece of. Um, whatever color that is, crumb cake. And I cut it with the <clears throat> the bestest sized rectangle. It's actually seven eighths by two and seven eighths. Like you need to know that, but that's the one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adhere that. Oops, I'm gonna cut that little thing apart. That one right there is all together right now. I'm going to use some dimensionals. And I have mentioned, oh, probably a billion times, I think, so if you're tired of it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> that when you are playing with a bow, it's sometimes more helpful to put the dimensionals on the actual card front instead of on the thing you are dimensionalizing. You see what I'm saying here? And yes, Rosie is correct. Don't forget that I won't be here for a few weeks. 
not weeks, week and a half. It's not even that long. All right, I'm gonna make this kind of straight. Sometimes there's a little bit of an optical illusion there because you got so many angles going on. So you can use your, um, put your card base straight with your grid paper and then extend that line so that you can kind of make sure that that's as straight as you can make it. And then as a final touch for this card, I'm gonna use some brushed metallic adhesive back shapes, dots, they're shapes. They are dots, but they also happen to be shapes because round is a shape. Don't you, ever, you remember that joke from 100 years ago? They tell me I need to get in shape. I am in shape, round is a shape. That's, that's true. And so there is our card front. Now let's go ahead and on a piece of crumb cake. I'm going to use crumb cake for my liner. All right. Hang on just a second, you guys. Sorry. I'm uh, sorry. If it is something blooming, it could quit any time because it's very annoying. All right. And we're going to use the crumb cake as our inner liner. Clean up my ink, my stamp. Now, <clears throat> here is a thing. When you're doing the mixed colors on your stamps, whether you're doing blending brushes or daubers, whether you're on a block or on your stamp apparatus, <clears throat> when you go to a new stamped image, clean off your stamp or you'll get all sorts of muddy colors going on and nothing will look like you think it's supposed to look. Thank you, Lenny. I'm sure we'll be safe. I've been We've been watching the hurricane and it looks to me like we will probably do some driving in the rain tomorrow, like a lot of it. But I think it's going to be out of the Jacksonville area by the time we get there. So that is good, good. And tomorrow night we have center stage. Amy and I will be going to center stage. But first we're going to have Mexican dinner with our team. So that's very exciting. It really is kind of the best part of going to these events. I'm so happy we're back in person because they're so fun. And it's so good to be able to see our team. Okay, I got a little carried away with the Cajun craze there, so I'm going to spread it out a little bit. And I could I could clean it off, but I'm going to go crazy and not. We're going to see what it does. There's always the other side of this piece of cardstock, right? Always the other side. Ooh, I like that. That came out pretty. I like it. Okay, I'm going to clean off my stamp. I need to stamp this two more times on my envelope. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. And then we'll be done with the inking portion of the agenda. <laughs> Debbie, I know. Yesterday, Wayne came in. I was doing a reel for a card next week. And I was halfway through and he came in and he's like, have you got any <clears throat> paper glue? And I'm like, well, I'm a card maker, so I'm going to go with yes. And... <laughs> I tried to do the next step of the thing, missed an entire piece of it. So I had to take the card apart, <laughs> delete half of the reel and start over. And I'm like, dude, really? He goes, but I need some glue. Give me five minutes. I promise I'll be done. But I really need glue. And then he was really disappointed because it wasn't instant like, like um, super glue. <laughs> like, it's just not super glue, man. It's going to take a second. Silly man. All right, and so this one I'm putting it on outside instead of on the inside because I can, right? You do kind of want to look and see if you see any hard edges. And by hard edges, I mean where one ink changes to another, but it's a real hard boundary and kind of pat that out if you can. Let's make sure I'm putting it on right side down, correct side up. It is always an emergency, always. <laughs> All right, I like it. I love this technique with this particular stamp is just spectacular. It's also really good with the baby wipe technique. I've done a card with that, and I hope you saw it because it was awesome. This this stamp is just perfect. This may be one that even if, please, Stampin' Up! don't retire this after this catalog. Please make it carry over. Please make it carry over. But if it doesn't, I may have to keep it anyway just, just because it's so pretty. All right, we're going to do one more little bit different, but sort of the same in that it's the same colors. And I'm just going to put it on the envelope flap like that. Ah. 
Don't forget your envelope, you guys. It's your first impression. There you go. They just have different names. You put a sack over their head, you'd never be able to tell the difference. All right, now I can put this dangerous ink away. And by dangerous, I mean like I'm going to get it somewhere in about two seconds, I'm pretty sure. And we'll just do a little adhering, and we'll be ready to roll. I just almost put that in my thing. All right, I'm going to try. I'm going to be brave and try some stamp and seal on camera. Oh, look at that. It worked. Stamp and seal is one of those things that can be persnickety, and it can make you say bad words. I'm just saying it can. I, I have said a few bad words, but it's really, really good adhesive. So I'm trying to train myself. I just bought like seven refills because I wanted to make that my thing. I want it to be my thing. All right, and then we'll get our card base. And we're going to try again. And here's, go straight down. And you know with um, Snail and Fuse, remember old uh, Stampin' the Fuse stuff we had? What was the other part of its name? Fuse. Stampin' Fuse? I don't know. But you did like a check mark. If you do a check mark with seal, you're going to yank that tape right off of the little roller. It's going to go to the side, and the next thing you know, you're going to have like a hairball of tape. So don't do that. Flick down. Don't flick sideways. Flick down. Like so. Look at me like acting like I'm a stamp and seal expert. I'm so not. All right, and let's make we're just making sure it's on right side up. And we will put this on like so. And you know what? So this is amazing and awesome. We're done. That is all there is to that. Isn't that I just, I love this card so much. I made this the other day while we were on our Zoom meeting on Monday, and I didn't really know what I was going to do when I started. I just kept going, and all of a sudden, I was like, Oh, that card is wonderful. I love it. I know. That's very modest of me. I know. All right, guys. I appreciate it. I'm going to miss you all very, very much. I will be so excited to be back. So I'm going to say that probably the next time we'll be together on a video is Thursday, two weeks from now. Um, because I won't be doing one on Saturday. But if you're a Zoom the Craft Room person, I'll be on on Monday whatever that, see, 19, 20, the 21st, I'll be back on my Zoom. So hopefully you'll be able to join me and be watching. I will be posting up on on my Facebook page things as they happen at on stage, and you'll start to see some pictures of the cover of the next catalog and maybe some samples. So hope you'll be watching. Thank you all, guys. I appreciate you. For those of you who I'm fixing to see in Jacksonville, I can't wait. It's going to be so fun. Think about what kind of pizza you want. Everything is on the table, but no anchovies and no, no pineapple. No, no. All right, guys. We'll see you. Thanks so much. Ta.